We get started with Mumsy Soap School, and um, I'm very glad that you're here. Very glad that you're here. We are going to do two things today. We are going to um, finish making the lavender oatmeal soap, which is a regular size batch, which is going to go into the big mold. It's an eight pound batch, and we are going to make a um, class size batch of equipping Haiti soap that I will just be giving away. And we're going to start with that. But first we're going to open up in prayer, and I'm going to, I wanted to welcome you and thank you all for coming. I'm very grateful to have you all here, and I just love to share my passion for, for getting clean, first of all. Everybody needs soap, and everybody needs to get clean, and I just really enjoy soap making, and, and um, I do it as a mission. So that includes, um, you know, talking about how Jesus has made me clean, you know, mentally and emotionally, and, and it's nice to be clean physically. So we'll hit on some of that, but I'm going to open this up in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. Thank you for an evening that we can just relax and be together. Maybe not be, be careful and be socially distanced and be considerate of each other, but just take a minute to get together and learn something new and have a little bit of fun. Lord, we thank you that you are good, that you are God, that you, um, you shed your blood to cleanse us. You died on the cross, you rose from the grave, and your resurrection power is still at work and available to all of those who would receive. And I pray for each woman here, and um, I thank you uh, for being with us. Okay, so at the beginning it says, I began making hot process soap in 2015 as a mission project to raise money because I was called to go on mission to Haiti. And so I was going to need to raise about $3,000. And I don't know if God's ever called you in faith to do something like that, but I felt very much over my head. <laughs> so I learned how to make um, soap watching, um, watching people on YouTube. And that's why I make the videos, because I learned how to do it. And I am indeed giving you the recipe um, my perfected recipe in case you are interested in doing it. And I do it in this size batch so that if you choose to um, make a batch, this is something that you could actually achieve in, in your own kitchen. Okay. We're going to start with, if you want to look on your recipe, in, in the batch um, we have my base recipe is coconut oil, Soybean oil and manteca. Also included in my batches is steric acid, which I buy online and I just brought it so you can pass it along. It's kind of a waxy thing and it makes the bar a little bit harder. So in our pot, in our crock pot, we're going to put our crock pot on low and I'm going to put on my gloves on my gloves. Oh, and I did want to tell you first, um, I have soap for sale, or if you are interested in having me make you a custom batch, it would be this size, and it starts at $33, and I, we go from there if you have a certain um, fragrance that you'd like to have, or um, additional ingredients that you'd like to have, uh, we can work that out. So in my coconut oil container, I have already measured out the coconut oil, the soybean oil, and the manteca. Yes, lard. So we're going to put that in our pot, and we have our pot on low. All right, let's make sure. Okay. All right, so, and you have your amounts right here. In soap making, you go with grams. For soap making, you need a digital, you need a, what is this? Scale. <laughs> and you go with grams because it's much more forgiving that way. So over on the side, this is what we're doing. We have 214 grams of coconut oil, about 200 grams of soybean oil, and 170 
nine grams of lard, and then I'm also going to add my stearic acid, which I have taped shut so it wouldn't fall open in transport. And I think that's 11 grams for this batch. And then to make soap, you need an immersion stick blender, which is what this is. And I'm just gonna give it a little burst because the, the um, steric acid is a little waxy. So I'm just gonna give it a little burst on low. And then I'm going to add my lye water. Now lye is chemical hot, which is why you'd want to use safety precautions. And for, uh, if you're gonna do um, soap making at home, I have included a video by Katie Carson of Royalty Soaps that has all of the lye um, safety that you would need to have. Um, so I made my lye water in advance and the, the amounts are right on here. You use distilled water and then you use lye. And um, when you, you always add the lye to the water, you never want to do it the other way around. You want to wear, uh, you would never want to get it in your eye. That would be a really big problem. And um, when you add the lye to the water, it heats the water up to about 200 degrees. So I've already done that. So now I'm going to add my lye water to my oils. And then I'm going to blend it together to what is called trace. And trace is like, um, kind of like pudding. So um, if you want to come closer to see, you can. I also have videos online. Okay, you, this is my grandson, Creighton. You take two steps back. Yeah. So when you're using an immersion stick blender, you want to keep it down. You don't want to lift it up because you don't want to slosh your oils and lye water. Lye is um, chemical hot and the crock pot is going to be temperature hot. So you just need to be mindful of that. It's so funny. You like it looks like pudding to me. What do you think? Yes. I think you should see it. Okay, so you can tell if you want to come up and look. I can't really hold it over there. It, see how you, it kind of drips? Mm -hmm. you, can go, you can go a little more. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see it? Oh, I want some pudding. You want some pudding. I'm going to give it another little burst. <laughs> and what time is it? Hi, welcome, welcome. So I hope you don't mind that your voice is going to be on YouTube. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. So what we've got is our soap batter in. Can you turn the phone to me? You, you need to sit down, Creighton. Okay. And if you want to look at this, we just got to, I've um, incorporated the eat. oils and the lye water and it's kind of a pudding-y consistency, mm -hmm. and that's called trace. All right, so we're gonna put the cap on that, and what time is it? 6.40. We put a time on here so we know what we're doing, and I'm gonna, the fragrance oil that we are using is a special blend that I'm making, and you have your pie. And um, if you wanna waste your hand like this, you can smell how it's gonna smell. Smells like Haiti to me. Oh. Okay, and I know you don't know. I was going to ask you, how you decided on this? Well, because I've been to Haiti, it kind of is like a summery smell, and it's always fresh. summer in Haiti. Mm -hmm. Smell it? Kind of a fresh green smell. Okay. All right, so I'm going to move back over here to my paper where we started. Okay. All right. Okay, so we already opened in prayer, and I told you that I began making soap in 2015 as a way to uh, make money for um, 
mission trips. Now over here we have the steps to make soap and we're gonna be going out of, going through these out of order. I'm gonna try to catch all of it. And while our soap is cooking, and I need to clean up this thing, um, we are going to go ahead and take the batch of oatmeal lavender that I already have done and finish it and put it in the mold. Okay, so how we're gonna finish it is when you add, let me tell you the steps first. When you cook your soap, you're gonna cook the soap and when it's done, you're going to add super fats. I have already added the super fats to the lavender oatmeal and my super fats in my lavender oatmeal are coconut oil, virgin extra pure olive oil, glycerin, and then I also add honey, which isn't actually a super fat, it's a humectant, makes the bar bubbly and it just gives it a special thing. I also have oatmeal in here too. So we're gonna finish this and I think I'm just gonna move it all over here. So this soap is completely cooked. This is the lavender oatmeal. It's completely cooked and um, since I added the honey, on the bottom, the, the honey makes it a little bit of a browner color. So I'm gonna stir that in a little bit. Now when you add essential oil or fragrance oil, you want your soap to cool down to about 160 degrees, which is why if you're not gonna add fragrance oil or essential oil, then you wouldn't have to worry about it. You can just mold it. When you have soap, you have to put it in a mold because whatever you put it in, it's gonna be that shape. So for our batch over here, we are just gonna use a milk carton. So that's what you could do that at home and then peel it right off. Um, you cook the soap for about two hours. You add the super fats and cook it for about 30 minutes. And the directions are actually on the smaller sheet that I've given you, the soap recipe. And also, if you get lost, you can always call me or you can refer to the videos on my YouTube channel. I came to get, now in this I like to have a color. Okay. Hey, Nikki, did you say this thing is on your YouTube site? I have it on a, um, I have it on a oh. playlist, but it's actually a video by Katie Carson, Royalty Soaps, who does that, um, that's what it's gonna look like. I'm a little entertaining. Uh, okay, so what we want to do is see what our temperature is here because you wouldn't want to add your one of the most expensive ingredients is your fragrance oil or your essential oil. So you wouldn't want to put it in and then just cook it off. Try to watch out for the so the person who trained me said you have to uh, confuse the soap. So you want it to be at about 160, which it is. So I'm going to mold this soap. First I'm going to add the lavender. Okay. So this is lavender essential oil. And for a batch this size, whoops, for a batch this size, I'm going to use um, four tablespoons. And I buy the big, big kind of <sighs> online. Yes. Lavender is very expensive. Yes. First, you just got to open up your jar. You got to be smarter than what you're working with, and that always holds me up. Okay. Yeah, I first started buying it. That's what I'll give a, give a promo where Patty's saying at New Life Nutrition Center. That's where I first, oh, that's just about right. We'll just use what we've got here. At New Life, New Life Tr Nutrition Center, that's where I bought my... The Now brand, you get 20 bucks off. The Now brand, yep. And it is good stuff. All right, so... No, you can, you can also... If you want, if you want a bigger bottle, 
Um, they'll order it for you and have it in a couple of days, but they have smaller bottles there, and they have all kinds of essential oils there. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that's where I first started buying my essential oils was at Good Life. Oh, does everyone like lavender? Because I bet you can smell it now. Are we all relaxed and sleepy now? The way I do this with the oatmeal, this is the, my, perf my method. Some people, you can cook the oatmeal right in with it. How I take my oatmeal is put it in a regular electric blender, regular oatmeal, and then blend it. So it's called colloidal, so it's just smaller. Mm -hmm. And then when I measure out my super fats, which I'm going to explain it to you um, after I get this molded, I'll explain it a little better. I put my oatmeal in there and let it soak because this um, batch has the three things I told you, the coconut, the soybean oil, and the manteca. And then once it cooks, it's completely saponified, okay? Now, a uh, completely saponified soap would be good for like... Um, laundry but not so good for your skin it would be stripping to your skin so after the soap is completely cooked then i add back um, some additional moisturizing ingredients so i that's what i add is the extra virgin olive oil the glycerin and the little bit more coconut oil and it makes a really nice feeling on your skin but if you so desired and you wanted to and you had a propensity towards some other type of mango butter. I mean, there's every kind of thing you can imagine. There's rice bran oil, there's walnut oil, there's watermelon oil. I mean, everything you can think of. Um, you could, you would want to, you would want to add that as a super fat. Can you smell it? Okay, so what I'm going to do is take this and put a layer. You're not going to play piano now. And I didn't, I didn't get your name. My name's Penny. Twilight. Twilight, it's very nice to meet you. So glad that you came to class today. Did you make your mold? My husband made my mold for me. You can, if you're interested, you can buy them already made online. But I am picky, and I like my bars to be um, flippable size. Yeah. I like to flip in my hand, and yeah. I also like it to fit in the soap box that I can yeah. buy at my local Walmart. Don't have to it. And I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer when it comes to cutting things, and I cannot cut straight. So my wonderful husband made me a mold so that I could have what my particular self wanted. Hmm. And when it comes out of the mold like this, mm -hmm. you have a, an eight, eight pound loaf. Yeah, when I started, when I started making soap, it has a lot of the same um, elements as cooking. But I just am never tempted to eat a whole bunch of soap. It's a melt like this size. Is it up to there? So now what I'm going to do is split this kind of in half-ish. And I am going to add some purple micas to it. And this is just what I have left over. On my note somewhere, I have the color that I really want to use. But I'm going to use the... Can I let you add in? You can. I'm going to do the use what you have principle. And I do a blend. And these you get online. Yeah, that, that, what I said is recycling. That is the kind of fragrance oil that you can buy. So um, when we get to the other one, I'll show you that. I'm doing too many, too many things at once. It's a tiny bag. Uh-oh. It's, it's mumsy proof. Oh, I can probably get it. I'm scared. Ta-da! What even is that stuff? This is lavender mica. So we're kind of doing a blend. Ooh. Is it like a powder? It is like a powder. And the ingredients to mica are 
Mi mica? Nope, you may not. Titanium dioxide, iron oxide, magnesium violet. So I just kind of mix half of it in the pot and keep the At other. At the end of the video, can you show them me? I can show you right now. So, hi, I am the person who is making the video. She is my grandma. And I'm actually a volunteer in this at Cornerstone. I'm not Cornerstone. Like we, we are at Third Baptist Church. It up. It's Third Baptist Church. <laughs> We're making soap in a dem soap demonstration. Not a few minutes ago, I was playing in the gym. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, you mixed half of it up. I did. Now, this is not the color that I prefer. It looks a little something so i'm gonna okay. add is more the kind of soap you're making that's what i'm making it looks really good though mm -hmm. it's aunt sally's favorite i want to wash my hands with it <laughs> creighton has helped me make soap many times Mumsy. Yes, dear. How do you even do you even take the tape off of this? Eventually, I do. Oh, I'm not very happy Can with my purple color. Can I draw? You may. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna call it good. Got a more like a great purple color. Not exactly what I was going for, but it will still smell good. I'm going to put that in the middle. So what I'm kind of doing for you is doing the end of the process in the middle so you can see it. I came here early so I could cook the soap uh -huh. so you could you could see me molding it. I was trying to cook like, I mean, put half of like the thing in there and then put the, that to see what color it was. It's pretty. It's kind of a, it's, it's really not what I'm going for, but okay. it's what I, I, the color's already paid for, so uh -huh. it works. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and use it. Why can't you just stir the rest of the purple up and like, and then put it down? Well, because as the designer and creator of the soap, I'm going to do it this way. <laughs> Everyone will have a little purple. Wait, maybe I have, maybe if I have ever have an idea of making soap, then I will give you that idea. I like your ideas. Hmm. Okay. Tomorrow I can cut it. Really? Oh wow. Tomorrow I can cut it. It probably is a little faster than that, but wow. wait till tomorrow. And it also, as opposed to um, cold process soap making or and I'm gonna bang. Great minds think alike. You've done this a time or two, haven't you, Creighton? Yes. I said you've done this a time or two, haven't you? And if you check my YouTube channel, he is in some of my videos. A lot. A lot of them. A few of them. And we'll go over what we've just done because we kind of did it in the middle. Okay. So on your page, the steps to me, and let's let me make sure in this yellow um, part. I have a YouTube channel called Penny Nelson, and I have a playlist called Mumsy Soap School. So I have a couple of videos on there that are going to go over everything at a slower pace in case you actually really want to make soap at home. And that's where you can find the lie safety video and the special tools video that I've already made for you. So the first thing you need to do is gather ingredients and knowledge, which is what you're doing now. 
including the recipe, which I'm giving you. When you um, become a little more experienced, you can create your own recipe. You're gonna need tools, just like with any job. You need the right tools to do it. And the first thing I do is prepare my lye water. So down here I have the lye safety video, and I told you a little bit about um, the lye. The lye that's over there I buy at Smalls. Um, I noticed that they did have some of it at Walmart for the first time. They had, um, had it at Walmart. And so um, what you want to do is look on the back of the jar, and you want it to be at least 98% lye. You don't want to use liquid plumber. That would not make a good soap, okay? So check out the lye safety, and that's what you need. Gloves, um, eye protection, and to be careful. Okay, I prepared my oils. So when you prepare your oils, you, you weigh them. And on your, see, on, your smaller, on your smaller batch, here's your amounts of your oils. And we've gone over that a little bit. Then, um, and you put them in your crock pot, then you're gonna blend, stick blend until trace, which you guys already saw that, step five. You're gonna cook the batter on low in a crock pot, and I have the time, and it's probably gonna take about an hour to um, cook. After the soap is completely um, cooked, and there's stages of soap, and that's what hopefully it'll, it'll kick on for a little bit and you'll get to see it cooking. Um, kind of bubbles up, it looks like mashed potatoes, it looks like applesauce, it looks like gets slickery. Um, and then after your soap is cooked, you're gonna add the super fats. So for the super fats for this size batch, we're gonna use uh, one tablespoon of coconut oil and one tablespoon of virgin olive oil. And we're gonna use one teaspoon of vegetable glycerin and honey. And then we're gonna wait for it to cool, which is step nine. We're gonna wait for it to cool to 160s and then we're gonna add our fragrance oil, which is our equipping Haiti smell that we're doing today. The next step is you put the soap in the mold and let it cool. And then you're gonna cut the soap and then you're gonna label the soap. Um, soap is not a highly regulated cottage industry but I treat it as if it was, okay? And if you were gonna make soap for family members or different people, you would want to have your ingredients on there um, for your family members because some people do have allergies. So on all the, of my bars that I sell, I have all the information on it and what, what um, ingredients that we have. And the bars are a little different, the ingredients that you put in it. So, and they're all marked accordingly. Pieces of paper Sh sit down. Of course, after I usually have to clean up before I label my soap because it takes me a little while to get to get cut and get labeled. So the final step in everything is clean up and put all tools away. <laughs> I have a hard one with that one. I never like to clean up. I like to go on to the next event. Um, I put my phone number here if you need me. And I wanted to tell you what uh, saponification is. Saponification is the actual chemical process that you take. You have oils and you have lye water. And then you combine them together and they become a different, um, it's a different molecule. And we are forcing the saponification with the heat. People who do a different kind of um, Soap making is called cold process. And you can, you can um, do a lot of different things with it. It's a, it's, a, it's a creamier batter. Mine turns out more gloppy like mashed potatoes. So I have limited ways that I wanna use that. The advantage to hot process is we can use it right away. I can use it tomorrow. Cold process has a longer saponification process, and I'm not an expert in cold process soap, but it takes a period of days and then a period of like six weeks before your soap, you can use it. And I don't like waiting six weeks. So um, my soap is ready to be used tomorrow. Now it is true, and I, I have the date on it. It is true, you know, like this soap I made in November, excuse me, a five means May. Yeah. You can't fool me. <laughs> you cannot fool me. A five means May. Um, so it does 
you know, dry out more and you have a harder bar, but you're able to use it right away, so. Okay, let's see, where else are we? I told you about the saponification. I told you about the live safety. I directed you to the video that I made at home that tells you about the special tools. I've made you aware that if you want me to do a custom batch for you, I would make you a batch of this size for about $33 and then we can negotiate. I also do classes if anyone's interested with the mission focus and um, I can do that in your space or for your class or anything anything you want to do. We just we usually like to be fed, so if you'll, if you'll give me lunch. <laughs> and there is snacks over there if anyone needs some Down snacks. The, the, the the okay, it makes about a two, I think it's less than two pound batch, but it depends on what you put it in. So we are going to put um, put it in this. Mm -hmm. So I kind of take this and then I cut them in half because they're going to turn out square. So they, they're more like a, um, like a hotel size bar. Oh, okay. But if you wanted to, you know, make them bigger square bars, you could do that. This it, size? Yes. No, wait, no, that's my no, other mold. Better, that's that's right? my other mold. Yeah. Okay. So, but you can cut them, you know, any shape that you want them to be. And also, you know, I do have another mold that ends up being that size if that is what you want to as well. We can do that. So let's go ahead and go over the scripture that I wanted to share with you. And if you um, have it right on there, if you have a Bible you want to take out, you can, you can read it together. And we're going to read Psalms 51, 10 through 17 in the NIV which says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Creighton, I could really use some help on this one. Can you read number 11? Number 11? Where? Right there. Do not cast me from your presence or take the, your Holy Spirit from me. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. Restore to me the joy of your I salvation. About third grade. First grade. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will That's teach. Like years, Shh, my turn so. to talk, please. Then I will teach transgress, transgressors your way so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O oh God. You are. Uh oh, I'm goofing up. You who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you have any papers that are folded? I have that, but you can you can fold that and you sit down. Some of the thoughts that I have about this is create in me a pure heart. I know for myself, I've noticed that my heart has needed cleansing, and whereby with soap, I like the thought um, when your hands need cleansing. I guess it would help just to use water, but they probably go against that with all this coronavirus and everything now. Soap would be the best way to trap the molecules off your hand. Um, so everybody needs soap, but the same as with soap, soap only works when you apply it yourself. I mean, I guess when you're younger, someone can force you and wash your hands, but, but when you're older and you want your hands clean, you have to apply soap yourself. You need to use some friction, you need to use water, you need to rinse, you need to dry your hands. And it's a little more challenging when things inside of us in our heart need cleansed. But God tells us that he will create a pure and clean heart within us. And he can do that, he can restore joy. Okay, yeah, this is then I will treat teach transgression, trans, ooh, I can't say it, oh, we all need a little training sometimes, and we all do transgress against the Lord, either in big ways or small ways, and I think in this generation, um, even the younger, th thankfully Creighton does know, or if you've been teaching your grandchildren, but um, 
most people are not taught the Bible, so they're not they're not aware that um, our our sin and our mistake. You need to sit down and stay sitting by Aunt Sally. Go creeping. Go sit by Aunt Sally. This overall story of creation is there was God. He existed before he created anything. He made the earth and he made men and women. And then he gave them a will because he made them in his image. So he gave them a choice. And this cracks me up. He gives us a choice. But in the garden, they only had one rule. <laughs> only one small rule. <laughs> Not a whole bunch of things. Only one thing. And God gives them, I don't know. 10, 20, 50, 100 trees and a place that you can be and only one thing that you can't do. <laughs> Don't bother that. And that's the thing about, about God is he gives us a choice. He doesn't just put us in a cage and tell us you have to and then we don't have any, we don't have any choice. We, we can choose to do what he asks us to do or do it our own way and there's consequences either way. So, but just like Adam and Eve, they go, and that's what they go. First of all, they don't remember what God said. Then the enemy twists it just a little bit, and um, they make a mistake. They sin. That's what, isn't a mistake so much nicer than sin? Like, <laughs> so much nicer to say mistake. <laughs> but they, they didn't listen to God. God comes and asks them, what have you done? And they don't give a, an, an honest answer then either. They blame each other, they say all these things, and they don't, they don't come clean with their mistakes. So there was consequences for that. So God um, expelled them from the garden, and from that day to this, we have had a sin nature. We have an um, eternal person inside of us, and we have a sin nature, and that's what, that's what people are sinful. Um, I know someone I love very much who feels that people are basically good. People are basically good. And I would like to believe that, except how do you explain malevolence? How do you explain how some people really do some horrible things? I don't think that people are basically good. I think that people have a propensity to choose the wrong thing, and it takes a lot of effort to, to do the right thing, for some, it's harder than others. But the thing about that is God gave us a way. He paid the price for our sin and our mistake, and then he gives us the opportunity again to receive it, to receive eternal life. And that is where he leaves all of us. So that was probably the gospel, according to Mumsy, in about three minutes. <laughs> and probably not the best presentation that you've ever had, but it's what I did just now. And after you hear, I do, after you give a gospel presentation or you share some of the truths of Christ in the Bible, it's always good to ask a question after that. So if you're smarter, you think of the question ahead of time. So I've just, <laughs> which I'm not. <laughs> if you're smarter than me, you have it prepared and written down on your paper, but I don't. So after you present the truth of the gospel, then you ask a question. So the broadest way to ask is just to say, would you like to respond to Christ? Or you could ask, have you ever heard this before? Did you know you're a sinner? Would you like forgiveness? I mean, there's a bunch of questions. So I don't know what question to ask a big group like you. But I would recommend surrender in all cases. Okay, we've gone over um, the soap recipe. And with that, oh, we can look at the soap cooking. Don't need time up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it'll help. Okay, if you guys want to come over here one at a time and look, the soap is cooking. It does not. It does not. Oh, it's I think it's smell it. Oh. See it? It's pretty as it did before. It looks like it's got a growth. It's cooking. It's bubbling up. It's bubbling inside of it. It has to look very like yeah. yeast and be dusty. 
I'm going to show my. Now, if you guys have any questions about soap making, I will give you an opportunity to ask them. Oh, and I forgot to go over this too. Melissa had a great devotion for soap. I just love that. Does anyone have any questions about soap making? Okay, on your on your recipe? Yes. This is cooking on 76 degrees, so you would be heated to that? Okay. There are two different kinds of coconut oil, and this is the coconut oil that I bought from Walmart. Okay. But there's um coconut oil, it's at 76 or higher, it becomes liquid. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's other oils that are harder, and I don't know the numbers. So what does it tell on the front? Doesn't tell, but <laughs> that, it's that one get solid, though. You that just, one's solid. Right? This, it, well, if it's if you buy it in the grocery store, it's usually not 76 degrees in the grocery right. store. It's right. it's cooler, so it's a solid. In the winter, it's much harder. And then in the summer, you know, it's closer to 72 or whatever you keep your house. it's probably cheaper to buy a solid than it is the liquid. Is that what, your liquid up there or is that glycerin? That's, have that is glycerin, it. yes. And that would be way more expensive. That so what I have, this is refined coconut oil, so it doesn't have the coconut smell. Right. If you prefer to have one with coconut smell, you can do that as well, but I don't prefer. Mm -hmm. I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I don't want the coconut smell. I just want the benefits of the coconut. Do you have a question, Creighton? Okay. Anybody else have a question? Does anyone else have a question about soap making? We don't know what's the time frame from the time it gets through cooking, whatever, to boiling. Is it Okay. Usually when I cook it in my big crock pot, have a seat, mister. I cook it for two hours. The, oops, I better put the lid back on. The smaller crock pot, it's probably going to be done in about an hour or so. And that's what I don't know how long you guys want to hang out. That's kind of why, why I did both processes so you could see, you know, you are, you've already seen everything pretty much. It's going to cook. It's going to keep cooking. I'm going to stir it. Then I'm going to add my super fats, let it cool, and put it in the mold. So you've actually... And you still allow that about 24 hours, the same as that, before you cut it? Yeah, and you can cut it sooner. Um, I just let it go for the day and then take it out of the mold. And honestly, my favorite part in the world is taking it out of the mold. That's just like is my favorite part, just take it out of the mold. And I do have videos on my YouTube channel, which the playlist on my YouTube channel is called Providence Soapery 62959. But um, I think it's amazing that ever anyone ever even came to my channel because you have to type in the whole entire all of that to get to my face so you know what to click on. So I changed my YouTube channel name to Penny Nelson. I know, creativity <laughs> at its finest. <laughs> so... Um, Do you stir at any time while it's cooking either batch? Yes, I, yes, usually in the bigger batches, I'll go for about an hour and then stir it and then let it go another half an hour and stir it. Um, different people have different opinions on how to do it. Since it's a thicker thing, you kind of want to keep the water in it as much as you can. But fortunately for me, soap making is very forgiving and it's not especially particular. So I've been very fortunate that in the six years that I've been making soap, I've only, only ruined one batch. Because you can imagine with um, that amount of batch, that's quite a bit of an investment of time and materials. And the r way that I um, goofed up on that batch was when I made my lye water, you have your water, you always put lye in water, and you want to make sure you have all, I'm not giving you all the information you need to have, so don't go me messing with lye until you know what you're doing. <laughs> you got to watch the other videos. <laughs> got to take care of yourself. You're responsible for you. But um, I put the lye in the water, and um, when I came back, I didn't realize it, um, so I take my lye water, and I put my lye water in my oils, and at the bottom of my container is a chunk of like a lye rock. Oh. So that meant that my lye didn't get into the soap, but I just put all that water into the soap, mm -hmm. and I didn't have the right 
chemical formula to make soap. So the moral of the story is when you add your lye to your distilled water, you make sure that you stir it properly. Or if you don't, you make sure before you put the lye water in that you don't have a chunk of a lye rock at the bottom of your water before you add it. <laughs> so that's really all in the mistake. I think that's pretty good in all that time, and I really, really have enjoyed um, soap making. All right, does anyone else have any questions? Did I review the recipe properly enough for you? Is that wax paper or is that parchment this, paper? It is freezer paper. Freezer paper. Mm -hmm. It is freezer okay. paper and you can line anything. Like when I started, I even took like a, a um, you can take like a Tupperware container. You can pretty much take anything and just pop it out of that. Whatever you put your hot soap into, it's going to it's gonna be that shape. Now you can't so much like if you've seen the, the shapes of soap, like a little kitty or a paw print or, you know, all those type of things, uh, like a candy mold, that's what you use, but it, it's not very good for hot processed soap making. You would want to use cold because it's more liquidy. It's more liquidy. This is too gloppy and you can't make it flat on the bottom. So usually if you get something that's been in a mold, it's either cold process or it's called melt and pour. You can go online and buy like a cube of soap that you just put in the microwave and melt it. And then you can add your own fragrance oil and coloring and then you can pour it into like candy molds. And that's how some people do it. So, but that's not my thing. This is my thing. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's make sure I've gone over everything because you do have all of the directions on here and my phone number if you forget what you're doing you can call me and I'll be glad to help you um, yeah all the directions are on here and I did tell you for this size batch number five down here and that gives it about a 10% super fat which makes for a really nice luxurious bar makes it really nice. Remember the, the commercial years ago, the one bar of soap and it had a quarter cup of moisturizing cream. You remember that advertising? It's kind of the same thought, yeah, is the soap, you're gonna add your additional moisturizing oil. The other benefit about doing hot process is, if you wanted to use, my ingredients that I use are not super expensive. If you wanted to use, I don't know, rice bran oil, walnut oil like the next time you go to the grocery store look at all the different oils that they have there they have everything you can imagine the grocery store? yes they have corn oil they have but What's mango the butter store? mango butter shea butter coconut cocoa butter all those things mm -hmm. when you do cold process so you cannot control um each oil has a different saponification amount so my soap is um, superior in that way. If I wanted to use a more expensive oil, like mango butter, shea butter, some of those things are really expensive, $10 a pound for mango butter, I would put it in after all the soap was saponified so you get the full benefit of the mango butter. Does that make sense? So, And the bar is of a good enough quality to me that um, using the cheaper ingredients for my base, um, I still get a, I get a great product out of it. And so like your mango butter is going to be like one of your super fats. A man, you, you'd want to use mango butter or any of your more expensive oils, like whatever floats your boat. Maybe, maybe you want to put a different thing in there for your skin for some reason. That's what a lot of people like, the, the essential oils. Mm -hmm. So um, mine is at about it's either 3, three or 5%, which is in a safe range. But... Um, when you're using soap, it's not like you leave it on, you're rinsing it off. So it's only on there for, you know, however long you leave it on, and then you rinse it off. So you're good on that. Okay, at the bottom I do have here, um, if you want to order some soap supplies online, um, Steph's Micas and More has um, fragrance oils and the Micas that you can buy online. It also... There's other additives you can add, and some of my other soaps have clay. Um, let's see, I can't think of anything else right off the top of my head. 
goat milk. Yeah, goat milk you can put in it. Mm -hmm. But that's who I recommend for that if you're interested in doing that. And me. I think I've I think I pretty much covered it. Everything. Does anyone else have any other questions? Now I use try I tried using goat milk. I don't actually know any goats that are lactating, so I'm off the hook on that one. But um, it is much more challenging to make a goat milk soap with real goat milk because your milk scorches, mm. and it just people don't enjoy. I mean, they just, I mean, like I get away, mine is a, uh, my finished product is a country rustic type of shabby chic, you know, um, bar. That's, that's just how it, how it is. But when you scorch your milk and it, you know, that's just too far over the edge. To <laughs> it's just too far for me. So with my goat milk, I use um, dry powdered goat milk and add it at the end as a super fat. And I have one bar left over there. Um, for sale. So that pretty much concludes my presentation on soap making and you guys are welcome to hang out and grab some snacks and uh, you know we can finish up the process and you can you can browse the soaps if that's your thing and uh, we can go from there. That's it. Mm-hmm.